have a system like very well oiled system in place to do this pretty seamlessly and easily, then I would say, you know, like maybe get out of your comfort zone and try new things um, and it'll really pay off in the long term, you know, as utility costs continue to go up and you now have a way to recover on those expenses. Welcome to the show. You are listening to the Real Estate Lab podcast. In this lab, we decode the stories, secrets, and skills of the most brilliant minds in real estate investing, then turn their wisdom into practical advice and knowledge that we can use to boost our income. And now, let's turn it over to our host, V. It's a great day to be alive and to invest in real estate. My name is V Ku, and you're now listening to my show, The Real Estate Lab Podcast. Hey, how are you doing, my friend? Today, we are going to talk about a topic that uh, a lot of you are familiar with, but not a lot of you pay attention to. That is water. Now, in feng shui, I'm Chinese, so feng shui, we consider water as money. And in this particular case, with the guest we're talking about today, it is particularly true because you are paying for it. You know, if you have any kind of properties that's uh, more than one single family home, like a duplex, triplex, fourplex, up to apartment buildings that you are used to pay for water, hey, you need to pay attention to today's episode. Before I get started, though, I want to share with you about a training program that I'm putting together, a group coaching program where we will talk about different things from how to buy your first property to tax saving strategy to how to buy without using much of your money or credit at all. You know, if you are the type of person that have been to a lot of seminar that have acquired a wealth of knowledge, but you never have the ability to execute on the plan on how to own your first real estate property or to start your investing career, this is the right place. Go ahead and reach out to me for a discovery call. We will see if we're a good fit and see if I could help you out. V at realestatelab.live. Send me an email, schedule a time, and we will go over it. Now, back to my guest. She works for a company that specializes in ratio utility billing system, rubs system. The company is called Livable. It is a leading residential and commercial real estate utility building company, providing a suite of cloud services, including bill auditing, benchmarking, and uh, you know using their rubs system. Livable has been serving the real estate industry since 2009. The utility management platform was built to recover utility costs for real estate stakeholders, property manager, housing provider, people like us, basically. Now, the guest today is Sarah. Now, Sarah Hoverson is a native Texan, now lives in sunny San Diego, and is the account executive for Livable. She enjoyed long walks on the beach and helping property owners find ways to unlock revenue. Now, I know you're going to love this episode because why? At the end of the day, if you are paying for water and then all of a sudden you are now able to shift this cost over to your resident, wouldn't that be wonderful? And particularly important in today's episode, you will find out that you can even do it no matter how small of a property you have. This is not something that would normally available for you because of uh, how to implement the drop system with other company is really costly sometimes, but not with her company, Livable. So without further ado, let's just jump right into today's episode. Welcome to another edition of the Real Estate Lab Podcast. My name is Viku, and I am excited to have someone from Livable uh, with me today. Uh, Daniel uh, was supposed to be on. He's the CEO of the company, but I have someone better. She <laughs> is on the ground running. She is talking to investor like yourself every day. And uh, Sarah, yeah. welcome to the show. And could you give the audience a, a rundown of your background and share a little bit about uh, your experience with Livable? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Sarah Hoverson, and I am the account executive here at Livable. Um, I've been with the company for um, over a year and a half now. 
And um, we've been experiencing just a lot of growth. Um, I come from a more corporate background in terms of my sales career. So this has been, you know, a really eye-opening experience working for um, what we might consider ourselves to be a startup, although we've been in business for 11 years and I can kind of get into the details of that. Um, but yeah, like you said, you know, I'm talking to property owners and investors every day about our services and, um, you know, ways to increase your ROI and kind of parse out some variable expenses. So give me like a, a 30,000 feet overview of what Livable um, do as a yeah. company. Yeah. So we are a utility billing and management company. Um, we typically, for the most part, uh, our, our main service offering is taking a property, a multifamily property that might only have one master meter for utilities. Usually that's like water, sewer, trash is usually on one bill. And we then divide that up Um, build the tenants and we have a billing software that does that, or we can integrate with property management software that's in use. And it's essentially a reimbursement to the owner for utility expenses. Okay. So essentially uh, the rough system, right? Exactly. Specialize in. Okay. Yeah. And that stands for ratio utility billing system. Okay. So how did this whole thing started. Um, I, I think I read online your company was once uh, called Greenville and then uh, rebranded as Livable. Yeah, so it was Greenview, um, and the company started um, 11 years ago, uh, founded in San Francisco, and it was actually created by a group of property owners um, and investors that needed a solution for their own portfolio. Um, so, you know, they needed a way to charge util- uh, their tenants for utilities and created Greenview. Um, over the years, they kind of expanded um, to help, you know, their friends and other people in the market with this type of service. And then about four years ago, kind of rebranded into Livable. Um, and since then, we've formed um, partnerships with several of the apartment associations across California and now into the Pacific Northwest, where we have a great relationship, you know, with those associations and getting in front of their membership base. Um, One of the reasons that that's so valuable is that Livable does not have a unit minimum. So we can service anything from a duplex on up. Um, Traditionally, you know, other providers in the space have had a kind of barrier to entry, um, you know, 30, 50 unit minimum. Um, Mm -hmm. So our owners, you know, did recognize that that was a segment of the market that was not being serviced. And so that's kind of one of one of our differentiators is that we don't have a unit minimum. So we will serve pretty much anything, um, you know, from a duplex up into the two, 300 unit complexes. Okay, so could you explain the rub system, how do you, let's say, I understand for the purpose of cost, it, you know, a big apartment complex, it, it makes sense. But like a duplex, how does it make sense for an investor to submeter and pay all that cost? It, it could be like the, the your profit for the whole year or two years to recoup the cost of submetering. So why does it make sense for someone to to do it at, at two units? Yeah, so the, the first... Um kind of distinction I want to make is that we don't do submetering. Um, okay. This is the alternative to submetering. So you're exactly right. You know, at some of these smaller properties, it would be a, a large upfront investment to make to install submeters. You know, you have the hardware, you have the time cost of getting the proper permits and going through, you know, those channels. And on a lot of older properties, it's actually not even physically possible um, to put submeters into place. So the alternative solution to that is the ratio utility billing method, where it's um, essentially an estimation based off of, you know, historical data that shows you know, one person is going to use this much, two people is mm-hmm. going to use this much. So we use an occupancy factor to determine okay. those numbers. 
Um, sometimes we also um, incorporate square footage, kind of just depends on the utility. But essentially what Livable does is we take a, we get the master meter utility bill and we divide it amongst the tenants based on, you know, a combination of those factors. Um, other things that are taken into consideration are in-unit amenities like a dishwasher or a washer dryer. Um, if someone has a dishwasher, they're actually going to be using about 30% less water than their neighbor who is hand washing dishes. Um, so a lot of those things, you know, need to be accounted for. Um, so those have certain weights and are calculated, you know, as such in our, in our algorithm or our, our system. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. And so then Livable has, you know, a, a a billing platform where the tenants can log in to view their bills. They can view the allocation table so they can see very clearly and and transparently how the bill was determined. And then they have the ability to either pay livable and we, you know, collect payment and reimburse the owner. Or like I mentioned, we can direct the charges to the property management software and the tenants can pay the, their property manager or the owner of the property um, directly at the same time as they're paying rent. Okay. So then what's the cost for the owner mm-hmm. if they were to you know, get involved and, and hire Livable? Yeah. So it's a great question. And the best thing about our service is that it can actually be free to the owner. So our price pricing is um, based on like a tiered pricing structure based on the number of units in the portfolio. So it's usually anywhere between five and $10 a unit. Um, And if the owner chooses to pass through all or part of that cost to the tenant, which is, I'd say, you know, majority of the time that is what happens, um, Mm -hmm. then it would be, you know, a free service to the owner. Of course, it's up to them, you know, um, what level of of responsibility for that bill they want. If they want to absorb that cost, certainly can, but it's kind of a sliding scale. Um, And in terms of, you know, the return, you can imagine, you know, even if you have a duplex and you might think, well, the utility bills, you know, the water bill is not that high. It's a few hundred dollars a month. I'd rather, you know, just provide that service to my tenants. Um, I have, you know, tons of, um, statistics and data that show, you know, utility costs are only continuing to rise. And will your rent increase, you know, year over year cover the cost of the those utilities? You know, you still have to factor in things like improvements being done to the property, et cetera. So if you can parse out one of these variable expenses and have the, te- you know, shift the responsibility to the tenants for that, mm-hmm. not only does usage go down, but also you have another kind of line item that you've now essentially, um, you know, crossed off. Okay. So another thing I want to ask you is, let's say you, you mentioned earlier, the price is about five to $10. Let's say you're on the high side as, as a duplex, right? Mm-hmm. If I were to come to you and say, hey, um, Sarah, I wanted to start the process. What does that look like? Yeah. So if you wanted to start the process, the first thing that, you know, we need to determine is whether your tenants are in a month to month lease or if they're in an annual lease agreement or if you're starting with a brand new tenant. So we have, you know, if if a tenant is in a um, an annual agreement, you need to wait for that renewal period to come around before you make any changes to their lease Mm -hmm. term. Um, if you have a tenant that's on a month to month lease, then that's a pretty easy, you know, notice that you can give, you know, 30, 60 day notice, depending on, you know, market ordinances, or if you have a brand new tenant, that's obviously the easiest way to go. We have a lease addendum that we would provide to you, um, that the tenant would then sign. And that explains, you know, the whole program explains how the calculations are determined. And then from you know your perspective, you would need to set up an account with Livable. Um, you give us the building information. You tell us what utilities you want to bill back for. Um, you provide the tenant info and the occupancy count, those types of things so we can kind of set up the account on our end. And then we need a copy of the utility bills, um, which we can actually direct download from the utility provider, take that step off of your plate each month. 
Um, and then it's pretty much, you know, off to the races. Um, we bill in arrears. So once we get the bill for the previous month's usage, we bill the tenants. And then it's a, you know, it's either a reimbursement to you or the tenants are paying you directly. The trick is to start when you renew, if you have a tenant that's on a year to year basis, or if they are, let's say you have a tenant where you actually have a month to month agreement with them, then you just add in the addendum and it's done. Correct? Yeah, so it's, at that point, it's a notice, like a, a notice, a change of terms. Okay. Yeah. And so you provide the notice and yeah, I would definitely recommend providing our lease addendum at that time as well just for full disclosure of the program. Um, but it's not required that they sign that because they've already signed, you know, their master lease with you. Um, mm -hmm. If it was a brand new tenant coming in, then yeah, they would need to sign our lease addendum. Um, what about in the event if you are subleasing? Let's say you are, you are the tenant, you're signing a master lease with your landlord and then you subleasing all the units out to someone else. Does that work in this case? Um, that's a great question. I I haven't I I don't know if that's happened. I haven't seen it just personally myself um with my clients uh because the the actual resident, the person that is then living in the unit would need to, I guess, come to some sort of agreement and have something in writing saying that now they would be paying either livable or they would be paying back the sub letter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure it could be done. I would just say, you know, get all the, the paperwork done. Um, so it doesn't, you know, that responsibility doesn't fall through the cracks. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, another thing then I want to ask you is your system, because I, I know this rough system has been around and there are many companies that kind of offer this system. So how is Livable any better or, or what's new about what you're offering to the market? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that the, you know, like I mentioned earlier, our, our primary um kind of differentiator is that we don't have a unit minimum. So we service a large portion of the independent ownership market, um, which I know here in California makes up about 70% of, um, you know, rental ownership is kind of the independent mom and pops. So mm -hmm. they were previously did not have this sort of option unless they had, you know, 50 plus units. Um, with that being said, we also are, you know, a smaller kind of boutique agency and we can move very quickly. Um, our software is very nimble and we can make changes as needed. We can create reports and data that our clients want to see. And so there's not a lot of, you know, red tape or bureaucracy to get through if we want to make changes. Um, you know, we're a, we're a small, close team and we move really quickly. So we provide like an extra, I think, level of, of customer support and tenant support that you might not get with a larger kind of, um, you know, national company, although we are national. <laughs> <laughs> so you do serve like the entire U.S.? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we obviously take a, a close look at what is... Um, uh, permissible, you know, in, in local ordinances and just depending on what kind of regulations there might be. Um, but we, we are in, um, you know, the full West coast, um, properties in Florida, New York, and then kind of sprinkled throughout the, the, you know, Midwest and central States. Are you aware of any state that's, um, does not allow a rough system? Are they challenging yeah, it? Yeah, right? there is a couple of states. I want to say Massachusetts, um, and I think it's like North Carolina. I think are a couple that that come to mind. Um, it's interesting. Um, you know, there there's a couple of states that have you know outright banned this type of program. Meanwhile, there's states like Texas that have statewide legislation around a rubs program or rub services where everyone needs to follow the same rules, um, no matter who the service provider is. And we love that. I mean, I hope that that comes to California. Um, here for now, it's kind of like the Wild West out here where every, 
municipality has their own kind of interpretation. Um, there's a couple of places here in California, uh, San Jose and Santa Monica that don't allow rubs, but that's it. Um, on the contrary, there's actually um, a Senate bill that was passed in 2017 that required or is requiring that all new multifamily builds um, as of January 2018 have to be submetered and tenants have to be charged for their water usage. So that's kind of the trend here in California. I mean, we were in a drought state for three years and the data again shows that if, actually this is an interesting statistic, um, there was a study done by the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, that showed that just making tenants aware of their usage and just showing them a bill, not even charging them, but just showing them a bill, um, decreased usage habits by 15%. So, you know, just kind of making tenants aware that, hey, you know, this is not an unlimited free resource. Um, someone is paying for this cost, you know, right now your landlord is subsidizing this expense for you um, and just showing them, you know, if there's a cost associated with it. This is how much water is um, actually goes a long way in changing habits and making people more, um, you know, aware and conservative in their usage, which is, you know, a huge um, goal and like mission for livable is to promote conservation. Um, so, you know, with that being said, here in California, you know, like that's the trend is that the, the state as a whole wants people to be responsible for their water usage. And they, they think that, you know, submetering is the, the best way to do that. And the just because you have, you know, the most accurate usage data. But in the cases where either submeters are unaffordable or, you know, not and not able to be installed, you know, they do allow for this alternative method. Here in California, they recognize that a tenant accountability is really important for, you know, monitoring usage, keeping usage down, um, promoting conservation. I think that across the United States, you know, a lot of of states probably feel the same way um, that, you know, if a property can't be submetered, if it's either, you know, cost prohibitive or, um, you know, not feasible for a building, there should be some other, you know, way uh, recourse for the owner to, you know, share this kind of uh, expense with their tenants and hopefully again, you know, promote conservation. Yeah, definitely. I have, I remember um, one of my friends here in Denver when I visited his apartment. Um, they didn't have to pay for water, so the guy just let water run, you know, all day long, basically, if he, if he could. I have heard, you know, like nightmare stories of tenants who I, I had one um, owner say that they were introducing this program and that they had it. He had a tenant come complain because he was afraid he wasn't going to be able to sleep at night anymore because he was used to leaving the water on the shower on all night long as his like white noise. Oh help, my God. Help him sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> There's YouTube for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. I don't know how long ago this was, but it's like, Oh my gosh. I mean, it's just, I hear some of the craziest, you know, stories from, from landlords and property owners about, you know, tenants hosting car washes or doing whatever, where it's like, you know, at least, you know, we can't guarantee a change, but we can say that, you know, making tenants aware and hopefully, you know, telling them like, this is, again, this is not a free unlimited resource. That's just, you know, like uh, widely available, especially like I know here in California, potentially other States where it's just a rising expense. So when you, implement the rough system and uh, calculate out the, the portion that each tenant has to pay. Do you ever run into a, a situation where the, the tenant or the resident would challenge you on that? Yeah. So um, we actually have uh, something you know built in to address those types of questions in the form of deductions. So the maximum amount that livable um, can recover for our owner or our clients is 90% of the utility bills. So the owner's always going to have, you know, some 
skin in the game. They're still going to be paying for at least 10% of the bill. And that covers a 5% goodwill deduction and a 5% common area deduction. Now that common area number might change, you know, if there's, for example, a swimming pool or um, heavy landscaping, um, you know, that number might increase slightly. But essentially, we have those deductions in place to account for those discrepancies month over month. Um, an example I can give that a tenant might say is, oh, well, I'm only there, you know, half the time or I travel. Um, the expectation, though, is that over the course of a year, their neighbor is also going to be traveling, you know, like it kind of all evens out. So um, unreported leaks, unreported changes in occupancy, guests, all those things that we know happen, but we can't track on a unit by unit basis, we have to account for. So we have those deductions in place. And that way the owner can say, or livable can say, hey, like we've already accounted for the fact that these things happen. We're not charging you, you know, 100% of what you technically should be charged. And so that helps to offset, you know, those those types of questions. And it also just shows, you know, that the owner is, you know, still sharing um, a portion of the cost because it is their building. Um, but really that's in place also to make sure that we're never overcharging any one tenant because that's where you could potentially, you know, get into some legal hot water if you're overcharging. So we need to be sure that we're not overcharging tenants. And from the investor or the owner side, have you ever run into a situation where they tell you, rub system, I can do it myself. Why do I need to pay you? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that there's many reasons why you would want to use a third party to do this. Um, one of the, you know, the biggest reasons that people, you know, come to us is that they want to be insulated from the, their tenants, right? They want to keep these two things completely separate. Rent is paid here. Utilities are paid here. Psychologically mm -hmm. to the tenants, they're paying a separate utility payment and they're, you know, it's not just bulk included with their rent, but it also, you know, insulates the, the owner or their property management team from fielding questions because we do have a full, you know, tenant support team. So they don't have to be you know, getting questions about, well, why did my water bill increase by $20 this month? Or how did you determine these trash charges? Those sorts of things. So I think, you know, it insulates them first and foremost. Secondly, is that we provide all of the necessary um, kind of the, the uh, allocation tables um, and we show our work, like how did the, how do we determine these, these figures? And that's all on our online portal. So from a compliance standpoint, that's really important. Um, if, if an owner wants to do this themselves, but is not prepared to show the tenants all of the work that was involved in calculating these numbers and be able to go back in time to say, Hey, this is how I calculated your bill, you know, in January of 2019, then again, that could potentially lead to some issues. So from a compliance standpoint, um, that's important. Also, you know, just, just taking that work off of someone's plate. I mean, if you're hiring or if you have an employee that's doing all of this, um, these calculations for your building and they're, you know, making $50,000 a year, well, now you can have Livable do this for essentially free now you've freed up that person to spend time working on other projects or doing other things. So really, you know, we're designed to be an extension of, you know, their administrative team. And like I mentioned with being, you know, kind of very flexible um, in our, in our software, you know, doing integrations or kind of um, working alongside their team to provide this service while kind of, hopefully making their lives easier. What kind of, what are other uh, developments that you guys are doing within your company to service investors better and kind of also improve uh, on the rub system on how you calculate uh, so certain allocations? Is there yeah. any R&D stuff? Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, we are, from what I know, like, 
you know, the most thoughtful in how we're doing these allocations, just because we do take into account like those in-unit amenities, um, like low flow fixtures are going to have an impact. We include miners in our calculations. So for example, I know some property management softwares have their own kind of calculator included where you might do the work yourself. Um, and, and it's kind of like a, a sort of add-on service, but it mm -hmm. doesn't go into that detail, right? And so we want to be as fair and accurate as possible. Um, we also have auditing. So we there's a trailing audit on all of your bills, which can also be, you know, super helpful if you have, say you have, you know, 20 buildings in your portfolio and each building has five bills, is someone really looking at every bill each month compared to previous months, right? And might not notice if there was an increase or a spike in usage, we do have that capability to notify you if your bills increase and hopefully, you know, determine what the cause of that was before we just blindly pass those charges through to the tenants. Perhaps there was a leak um, or, you know, work being done at the property. Again, like we don't want to necessarily just blindly pass through charges. So there's a very kind of thoughtful layer there. Um, and also it, you asked what, you know, what else we're working on and mm -hmm. this summer we're going to be introducing uh, even a more, a more detailed auditing and benchmarking service. And so what's helpful about benchmarking is you can, you know, track, um, you know, usage history, not only of the building against itself, but also against other buildings in your portfolio and even similar buildings like in your area. So you can see, you know, how effective or non-effective, you know, your, your systems are, um, you know, if you have, if your property is trending way higher than other properties in the neighborhood for utilities, you know, that could indicate a problem. So um, those sorts of things. And of course, also just a conservation aspect to the company doing um, like kind of we're going to be rolling out like a conservation corner, really taking the opportunity because we are interacting with so many tenants to educate them on conservation and sharing tips and tricks and things to hopefully, you know, move the needle in that direction as well. Do you have a sample package of what the um, allocation and the bill looks like on your website? So people who are interested could take a look before they sign up. Um, we don't have like a sample, um, what we, and if someone wants to, to see that, I mean, I'm, they're welcome to schedule either a call or a demo with me. Um, we can go over the, the platform. Um, what we do have that I would, you know, recommend people check out on our website is our pro forma calculator. So, um, you can just access that by going to livable.com slash calculator. And it essentially will allow you to put in your, you know, like occupancy count for your building and previous month's bills. And it'll calculate the estimated monthly charges for each unit, um, which will also show you your recovery potential, um, which is really helpful, um, you know, if you're doing any sort of um, underwriting um, on a potential property that you're looking to buy, you want to know, you know, what, where else you can find, you know, income at that property, but also it helps with, you know, setting tenant expectations. Um, you know, if you're going to be introducing a program like this, one of the first thing that tenants say is, well, how much are my bills going to be? They want to budget. And so if you use actual, you know, building data that shows, you know, based on a water bill last month of, $600, you know, your, your estimated charge would be around $35, for example. But, you know, you can run those numbers yourself. I'm also happy to run those numbers if anyone wants to get in touch with me and we can go over that together. We can run estimates for you um, as a, you know, a complimentary service. That's fantastic. And the website again is livable.com slash calculator, correct? Right. And that's livable, L-I-V-A-B-L-E. All right. And um, could you share your calendar link on how to schedule that demo sessions with you? Yeah, for sure. Actually, if you just go on our website, there's like plenty, there's like five different places where you can say like get in touch or schedule a call. 
and it'll go directly to Chase's calendar actually. And Chase um, does business development for us. So you'll schedule a call with Chase. He'll get some details and then schedule a call or a demo with me. Fantastic. Um, on I'm on the website right now and it's really interesting. So you can email uh, come save at livable.com. You could also call 877-789-6027. Yes. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. And um, so in terms of signing up, do you have any kind of specials for any investors who are interested in trying out the service? Yeah, um, I mean, depending on on the size, um, you know, of the of the portfolio, we offer you know certain sorts of either reduced um, you know cost per unit. Um, we also offer some revenue share uh, potential, just depending on the circumstances. Um, we have a pretty nominal sign up fee; it's forty nine dollars. Um, that usually whenever I do, you know, a, a program like this, we offer a waived service fee um, if they mention the podcast. So if anyone wants to get in touch and they do want to try our service and they mention that they, you know, heard about Livable through this podcast, then, um, you know, we would waive that that service fee or sorry, the startup fee. A startup fee. Again, the so mention Real Estate Lab podcast to Sarah or to Chase when you contact the team. Yes. All right. Where do you see people overlook the opportunity to use the rough system right now? Do you have you seen any of that lately? Yeah, you know, I um I hear a lot. Um, I mean, I, I I learn a lot from people about, you know, why they are interested in this type of program and why they think that it won't work for them. Um, so I love, you know, I love handling kind of um you know, objections like that, if you will. And I think one thing that people think that they just want to um, kind of do maybe as they have in the past is you either doing, you know, utilities included with their rent or doing a flat rate. And um, what I'll say about like flat rate billing, if you, you know, have, if you're going to say, oh, you're going to um, pay $25 a month for your water and, you know, $10 a month for gas. Again, that doesn't that doesn't affect any change in habits, right? Say someone uses fifty dollars worth of water, but they're only paying twenty five. You know, does that help your bottom line? No, not really. You're still, um, you know, covering their excessive usage. Um, you also run the potential to overbill, right? Like you don't want to leave money on the table, but you also really don't want to overbill. So the best way, and the, again, the fairest and most accurate way is to do this based off of, you know, historical data that shows one person uses this amount, two people use this amount, et cetera. So I understand that, you know, with, um, any kind of new program or kind of switching things up, people have a tendency to be a little hesitant. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers with their tenants, which we totally understand. Um, and there's definitely ways to um, to adjust the program to be, you know, accommodating and flexible um, for your tenants, right? So say that you didn't want to pass through 90% of the bills, you only wanted to pass through, you know, 50% or something like that, you could certainly like ease tenants into the program, give them the opportunity to see like how much they're using and give them the chance to use less. You know, if you, if you're tying a tenant's um, wallet to their consumption or their consumption to their wallet, they feel more empowered to make better choices. So again, I think it, the perception is important, you know, how you introduce the program to your tenants, um, you know, especially, you know, right now with, um, with the current, you know, COVID-19 and coronavirus, you know, I'm talking to a lot of people that are saying, you know, now is not the time for us to be introducing any additional expenses, right? Like a new expense to which I, you know, completely understand and agree. 
um, we have the capability to actually not pass through anything. Um, if you just wanted to have kind of use this as a monitoring service where you're just providing this information to tenants, you know, again, hoping that they're going to, um, you know, share some of the accountability and responsibility um, by either, you know, not passing through any of the charges yet, deciding at a later date, hey, in six months from now, let's start passing through incrementally some of the charges, or you start with, you know, passing through five dollars a month and increase over time. Um, that's what I mean by saying we can be really flexible on a building by building basis, a unit by unit basis. Um, you know, we definitely want to protect, you know, the relationship that owners have with their tenants um, and and kind of do the best we can to provide, you know, a, a service that everyone's happy with. Okay. So um I understand the the smallest size of unit you will go down is a duplex two units but do you guys do like group homes a, a concept that's really popular lately is um house hacking people living in one room and then rent out the rest to other people uh, would you go down to to something like that let's say i have five rooms in the house i my family's in one room and then i rent out the other four um you know kind of build back kind of, does that work? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it could, it could certainly work. Um, it, it, what really depends on is like, I would say, you know, how, who is going to be the the primary tenant responsible and does that tenant want to, um, you know, the, now take it upon themselves to collect, you know, the portions from the other tenants or how is that going to work? Um, if a tenant is in, and what I'm thinking or where my mind is going here is I'm thinking, are these short-term tenants or long-term tenants, right? Um, if it's someone that's only living there for one to two months, this might not be the the best fit because we bill in arrears, right? So we're billing um, once we get the statement from the utility company that the tenant might be long gone by that point. You know what I mean? Right, right. But um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is, let's say... You get a house, a, a rental property, just a single family home, and you have four or five rooms in that home. Mm -hmm. And you have some family that's renting out the room. Let's say a family have husband and wife, I'm single, bachelor guy, and then husband and wife. You know, so the numbers of occupancy different, but they are staying long term. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, yeah, oh, paying one bill, one water bill, right? Yeah, sure. Does that work in that yeah, situation? Yeah, that would be okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying now. For sure. I mean, if it essentially would be considering like that as a multifamily property, even though it's just one address, we could still have right. unit A, unit B, unit C, unit D for sure. Right. So you, you can still do that and it works for water, gas, Electric, everything else. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You could do that. Water, sewer, trash, gas, electric. Some other things that we go back for. I just want to just pop in here mm -hmm. um, are things like um, landscaping charges. If you have a gardener that's coming on a frequent basis, pest control, if they're coming monthly, uh, things like that, depending again on the market ordinances. But that's something that other things that we also include in our billing. Wow, that's terrific. One last question before I let you go. What's the biggest challenge in your business right now? Well, um, I mean, I think here in California, it's rent control restrictions, um, just kind of adding like more and more um, red tape to doing business here in California, you know, in the property management industry, um, which is honestly one of the reasons why we're excited about moving into other markets. Um, other than that, I think it's really, I think um, for a lot of the older generation that might not be as willing to try, you know, a software program, um, they might be more old school and want to, you know, maybe have a little more control over things like this. Um, you know, I would say they're missing on, you know, missing out on an opportunity to have people that do this for a living, you know, take this type of um, thing like off of their plate. And so if they could just trust that, you know, there's, there's companies out there like Livable 
who have been doing this for, you know, a decade and have a system like very well oiled system in place to do this pretty seamlessly and easily, then I would say, you know, like maybe get out of your comfort zone and try new things. um, And it'll really pay off in the long term, you know, as utility costs continue to go up and you now have a way to recover on those expenses. That's terrific. Thank you so much for your time on the show, Shara. I really appreciate it. And for all of our listeners, thank you for tuning into the show as well. Make sure, make sure you check out livable.com. Uh, Schedule a demo session with Sarah or Chase and their team. Now, before I let you go one more time, do you have any parting words with the audience? Um. No, I want to say, you know, thank you for having me on and thanks for your time. And yeah, I mean, I would really encourage anyone who thinks that this might be, you know, potential good fit for their properties to get in touch with me. I'm happy to, you know, run some numbers with you and talk about your particular scenario. And hopefully there's an opportunity for us to help. Awesome. Thank you for your time. That's the end of the show. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a five stars rating and review on iTunes for the Real Estate Lab podcast. Until next time, have a prolific week.